Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech and doing a deck tech today. The deck tech is over a deck known as Shardless Bug. It is a legacy a mid range deck that has a lot of disruption early on and a massive card advantage. It does extremely well against both tempo decks and against uh, combo decks. It also just crushes fair decks. Uh, combo decks, it's very flexible in that you can choose which discard package and control package you're using depending on whatever the current local metagame is. So let's jump in and take a look at the cards in the deck. Um, we've got uh, Snow Covered Swamp here. Uh, this is just basically a basic land for the deck. It's very nice to have at least one basic, especially since locally there's a lot of people who are playing Blood Moons. Uh, next We've got Underground Seas. Underground Seas are really the staple land for this deck. There are lots of cards that need blue and black in this deck. Uh, many of them even need two black, which is why I'm playing the full complement of four of these guys. Next, we've got a pair of Tropical Islands. Um, as you can see with the other dual lands here, green and blue are definitely strong support colors, but there's very few cards that take a double green, i.e. none, and there's only one Jace that takes a double blue. So you're seeing a little bit less of the emphasis on the other colors outside of black. Um, the bayous here, also, uh, you need the double colored, but you can get away a lot more often um, fetching an underground sea first turn and then a bayou second or third. Uh, we've got several fetch lands here, and the fetch lands go all the way through a pair of verdants, four misties, four polluteds. Which ones you use here? really only depend on whether or not you have a basic land in the deck or not. Uh, since I've got the snow-covered swamp here, um, I'm choosing to run at least six that are able to fetch that when I know that that's going to be relevant. Um, uh, you could easily up the number here. Uh, it's changing the two, mi two of the misties for two more verdants, but with the full complement of other dual lands, um, any of these can fetch any of those, which is nice. Creeping Tar Pit here is a wonderful win condition in this deck. It's also just a great way to take Jace out. It is one colorless, one blue, one black to activate it, and it becomes a 3-2 unblockable creature. It's a land that produces both black and blue and comes into play tapped. I've seen a lot of people play two of these. I'm down to one at this point because I've seen a little bit more combo recently and a few less Jaces. This is an ideal Jace killer. Got a pair of Wastelands here, and this surprises a lot of people that I'm only playing blue. The curve is a little bit higher in this deck than it is in a lot of Legacy decks, and I often don't want to draw three or four. I just need it for particular lands that are causing me problems, like a Cradle or a Tabernacle. I'm very happy with two in this particular slot. Now we're moving on to the spells. This card makes this deck. It's incredible. Brainstorm is just amazing. It makes it to where you can keep some hands that you probably shouldn't otherwise. Uh, too much land and you're able to shuffle it away. Brainstorm is draw three cards, put back two cards on top of your library. They don't have to be the ones that you necessarily drew. Uh, this is the Is It Golgari Brainstorm and it was uh, the Extended border here was done by Adam Rosenvig, um, wonderful artist from the Seattle area who, who does animation stuff. I definitely recommend checking his stuff out. I've got another video that just goes over altars and some of his stuff. Uh, next, oh, this is one of the reasons that I built this deck. Abrupt Decay is just a monster. I love this card. Every time somebody puts a counterbalance out against me, I'm super happy to have this card. Or the opposing side plays a Jitte. Card cannot be countered. It is the bane of Blue's existence, and it does a lot in this deck. 
When I first started playing this deck, I actually cut these guys entirely uh, and put in some control aspects. I really underestimated the power of Tarmogoyf. Uh, after putting Tarmogoyf back in, I realized that you need to win the game, and it's nice to win the game quickly. He's also just a wonderful blocker. He can get up to be a 6-7 pretty easily in this deck, given the number of planeswalkers, artifacts, creatures, instant sorceries, and lands that you're going through. Next one here is Ancestral Vision, and I've got a full complement of these. I must have hidden them a little bit. There we go. There's the other three. Um, Ancestral Vision is free to cast. Uh, actually, it can't be cast. It can only be suspended. You suspend it for one blue mana, and you draw three cards when it comes off suspend. But what's really nice about this card is it's good to suspend first turn, but it's much, much, much better with Shardless Agent. Shardless Agent allows you to cascade, and if you cascade into the Ancestral Vision, you end up drawing three cards for free. Just incredible. This gives you a 2-2 creature then that draws you three cards. Much better than a Divination. Um, Brainstorm is often used to set this combination up. Deathrite Shaman is 90% of the time the first turn play you want so that you can get to that second turn Shardless Agent or second turn Liliana. This guy is the best one drop currently out there for creatures. He eats the reanimator decks pretty effectively, is a nice clock against control decks, and is a wonderful accelerator. I've got Force of Wills in here. This is really the only counter spells. Um, as you can see, I'm only running three. Um, I have the fourth one sitting in the sideboard. It really depends on what your local metagame looks like, whether you want one, two, three, four Force of Wills in main deck. I personally wouldn't go below three. Um, the really nice part about this counter spell is that Shardless Agent cannot cascade into it. And a big mistake I see with people playing this particular deck is they'll put a bunch of things like spell pierces or fluster storms into this deck or maybe even into the sideboard and then cry when Shardless Agent cascades into them. Uh, Force of Will is a great counter spell because you don't end up wasting it you know, when the Shardless Agent cascades. I've got a pair of Thought Seizes here. Um, Thought Seize is amazing. One black. Look at your opponent's hand, discard a non-land card, it does two damage to you. Um, I also have a complement of Inquisitions of Kozilek in the sideboard, in case my opponents have a very aggressive small casting cost deck uh, where taking the damage matters. But this is one of the best ways to deal with combo, especially game one. Billful Strix is in here as a two of in the main deck and a two in the sideboard. He's got flying. Death Touch, and when he comes into play, draw a card. Against fair decks, this is what you want to cascade into. You just want another body to slow them down, get to the late game where your massive card advantage is going to matter. Uh, this guy also being a flyer is really nice. I've used him against Emmercool uh, once and lived. I did have to have a bunch of other permanents in play, but he has saved me lots of times, especially against Tarmogoyf's wonderful Tarmogoyf blocker. Uh, next, I've got a pair of Him to Trucks here. This is the new From the Vault 20 artwork. And Him to Truck discards two cards at random. You can take your opponent's land on turn two and just knock them out of the rest of the game. You can take valuable pieces of their combo. I love this. Uh, you don't want it, though, late game. So I'm only playing two currently. I would probably go up a few more if... I was playing against more combo and less fair decks locally. Maelstrom Pulse is just a wonderful answer to pretty much everything. About 98% of the stuff you're going to run into, this is a nice way to remove it. Now, I'm playing two Lilianas in the main deck, and this is a response to the number of people locally that are playing True Name Nemesis. If they're playing True Name Nemesis in a deck where that's really their major win condition, Lily is a wonderful way 
to get rid of True Name Nemesis and a great way to take over the board. I'm often happier to see Lily than Jace in some matchups. Um, I've went down to one Jace the Mind Sculptor in this deck. I know other people are running two or three. Jace is amazing. The plus two ability to keep him alive is really nice. Although it doesn't really stop things like the Tar Pit that we saw earlier or True Name Nemesis. Uh, the Brainstorm every turn is great. The minus... Oh, I got the ability is backwards there. The plus two um, is Fate Seal your opponent, which is okay in Legacy. Uh, but a lot of people have fetch lands, so you're often not able to get the value out of it you would in other formats. Uh, the minus one ability, though, keeps him alive, although it's really just an unsump, and it doesn't hit some things such as the lands that can damage him. Um, I definitely want a game or two off of the minus 12, but it's more likely that I'll win off of Brainstorms and Massive Card Advantage. Uh, if you're seeing a lot of show and tell and sneak attack, uh, Jace is not usually the win condition you're looking for. It's pretty slow, and they can often kill you before you even get him out on the board. I, I like Lily a lot more for dealing with those combo decks, and even the fair decks with True Name Nemesis. And the last spot here, I've got something I've been trying out, which is an Umata Jite. Uh, this is especially good against the elf decks, and there's a few local Seattle players that play elf combo. It's also very good surprisingly, against True Name Nemesis. You're able to gain some life and win the races where they would normally just be crushing you. You've got a flyer in here in Baleful Strix, which is a nice sword holder. Um, I love this card. If I was dealing with a lot of combo, I'd probably put this sideboard, but it's definitely won me a lot of games uh, against Tempo or Fair Decks and against Elves recently. That's why it's made it to the main deck. Now let's pull the sideboard over here. I've got another Jace. There are some matchups where Jace is just an incredible addition in the deck. Um, I've got another Force of Will. Um, more Thought Seizes. If I'm dealing with combo, I often just want to put in more hand destruction, control the game, and get massive card advantage. Uh, Lily for more true names. More hand destruction here and him to truck. Baleful Strix is for those fair decks. Uh, Inquisition I really love, especially against things like Pox. Um, the fact that you're not taking damage is nice. Uh, Nile Spellbomb is a wonderful way to deal with reanimator decks. A lot of people have just went to the four death rites that are main deck, uh, but I like having an extra answer or two in the sideboard specifically so that your dredge matchup is just really good. Got some more Inquisitions here. Uh, Gilded Drake. Um, I have been playing this for a while against the uh, show and tell decks. I really still love it. It's also pretty good against the uh, reanimator decks. It's a little bit weaker against the omni tell decks, and I could see possibly replacing this in the sideboard. Um, Sword of Temptation is there for the same reason. Very good against the show and tell decks. Uh, very solid against some of the reanimator strategies. Life in the Loam is here as a win condition against the grindy decks. Um, I love being able to recur wastelands, also get massive land advantage. Um, I might consider putting in one more wasteland if you're dealing with a lot of grindy decks like Jund or Punishing Jund specifically. And then Engineered Plague I've got in here at this point is another way to try to deal with True Name Nemesis. Uh, this, the guy's a bit of a bane for this deck. And I am much happier with the three lilies in the deck, with the Umata Jite, and with an Engineered Plague. So my game two and game three can tend to be really good against those decks. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech, looking at a deck tech for Shardless Bug, one of the best legacy decks out there. If you've got any questions or ideas, ways that I can improve this, please let me know. It's also a different style compared to the slides that I use for other deck techs. I'd love to hear your feedback on whether you like this style of actually seeing the cards uh, versus the kind of pre-produced slides. Thanks.